Welcome to the Backyard Professor Respond videos. I have an update on MI Atlas. The putative comet that's hurtling itself towards us at what we would consider breakneck speed, astonishingly fast, it's going to be to Mars. September 25th. That is uh, 12 days, 12 days, less than two weeks. Now, the new development <laughs> is this speculation, or is there mathematics and physics to demonstrate what I'm about to analyze tonight? This video. I've been listening to this thing over and over and over again this afternoon while I've been painting my newest watercolor painting, which is turning out to be exquisite. Don't know if I'll finish it tomorrow, but I will finish it by next week. Uh, this new analysis is shocking, really seriously. I know, it gets overused when everyone says bombshell. This is a bombshell if it pans out, and I want to share it with you. Let's go to the tape. Uh, yes, that's right. Harvard astrophysicist Avi Loeb. So many hate him, so many love him. Fascinating. Let's see what's going on. Harvard astrophysicist Avi Loeb has suggested that 3i Atlas is actually some type of alien technology. The numbers just changed, and with them, the entire story of 3i Atlas. For months, astronomers assumed this interstellar visitor would only skim past the red planet. Astronomers are continuing to track a newly spotted object, likely a comet, from outside our solar system. The interloper, named 3i Atlas, was first spotted on July 1st. A spectacular but harmless flyby. But new calculations from Harvard's obvious Loeb's team and independent analysts inside NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory have revealed something extraordinary. Uh, this is not a rock. And in that case, maybe it's targeting the inner solar system. We know that the trajectory is very well aligned with the planets. 3i Atlas's trajectory is not just precise. It's actively tightening and the speed is changing. Now that's newsworthy. This is Uncovered X, this YouTube video that I'm playing you and analyzing tonight. Its trajectory is changing as well as its speed. I do wish that he gave us the data. Uh, you know, you drop names of a lobe, Harvard astrophysicist. I mean, come on, can you get better than that? Uh, NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory, a vast scientific space commissioned situation. But I wish he would have showed the data. Let's keep listening. This might be just this guy. Now, interestingly enough, he's had over 300,000 views in just eight hours. Wow. People want to know this stuff. All right, let's look. And now, for the first time, the latest data show it could actually collide with Mars. 3i Atlas is moving faster than anything humanity has ever tracked inbound from interstellar space. Nearly 87 kilometers per second relative to the sun as of this week. In practical terms, it's covering the distance between Earth and the moon in less than 80 minutes. Every hour it travels, gravitational tugs from the sun, Jupiter, and Mars adjust its path by micrometers per second. Tiny changes that become enormous across tens of millions of kilometers. The Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter confirmed on its last path the object's comma, its hazy halo, has doubled in brightness since August, with strange high-energy spikes in ultraviolet. That's not typical cometary physics. 
The CO2 outgassing rate is far beyond what's seen in any solar system comet. Instead of stabilizing as it nears the sun, 3I Atlas is acting like a guided missile, self-adjusting, accelerating, and course-correcting by releasing plumes of gas in deliberate pulses. The new trajectory analysis puts the closest approach to Mars at just 1.95 million kilometers on September 26, 2025. That's interesting that he postulates it is like a self-correcting missile. The gravity of the sun, of course, is changing its trajectory as it influences it. But if it is also self-correcting in order to land on Mars, based on what we heard in yesterday's video, if you haven't watched it, go watch it that I put out, on the remote viewer saying that this is a craft and it is the reptilians, and they are part of a larger intergalactic situation of which we literally are in the dark on. And perhaps they are sending in reinforcements for something going on, and they have to stop on Mars. They plan on stopping on Mars and holding up there for a while, maybe an outpost, who knows. Extremely interesting. All speculation. For a planetary astronomer, that's a hair's breadth. At this distance, Mars's own gravity can exert measurable influence on the comet. Piece of what would have become a planet in another star system. And here's a terrifying twist. A mere 10 kilometers per second of additional velocity could tip the orbit enough to cause a direct hit only weeks later. Think about that. 3i Atlas only needs a fraction of the momentum SpaceX's Starship uses to launch from Earth to change its destiny from flyby to collision. And those momentum changes are happening right now, hidden in its tail. Spectroscopy from Gemini South in Chile has revealed something no one can explain yet. Instead of a steady random venting of sublimated ices, 3i Atlas's tail emits gas in clock-like pulses once every 17 minutes perfectly synchronized over days. These pulses produce microaccelerants in the exact direction needed to align with Mars's orbital plane. No natural process in comet science produces a rhythm that precise. In comets, jets erupt when sunlight hits fresh ice patches, but those eruptions are chaotic. They don't repeat like a metronome. Here, the pulses look engineered, like attitude thrusters on a spacecraft. If the pattern holds, by September 19, the comet will have imparted enough lateral thrust to close the remaining missed distance to under 50,000 kilometers, closer than some Mars moons. One major outburst could then push it into a collision trajectory. At its current mass, estimated at 10 billion tons of heavily irradiated ice and dust, with a metallic core perhaps 400 meters across, a direct hit on Mars, would release energy equivalent to 2 million megatons of TNT. That's thousands of times the largest nuclear device ever tested on Earth. The resulting crater could be 60 kilometers wide and 5 kilometers deep. Throwing that is fascinating as well because the steady 17-minute pulses just don't happen on any of the comets that we are aware of. And of course, we haven't looked at every comet out there in the entire universe, solar system, wherever, galaxy, doesn't matter. We, we can't see them all. But if this is happening, perhaps this is one reason, and in fact, I would suspect why Avi Loeb is saying this is not just a rock. Uh, something is controlling it, and... It will be fascinating to see if it collides with Mars. Uh, if there are beings, if they have hopped on a rock that is going this fast, and they've just been hitching a free ride for heavens knows how long, uh, maybe they can control it so that they land on Mars or at least orbit Mars for a while. I don't know. Again, all speculation, but... 
I think what makes this so unique and just so fascinating to all of us is it is coming so horribly close to Mars. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I am thrilled out of my gourd that we are on the other side of the solar system right now. There's no way it's going to collide with us. Thank goodness we aren't on that side uh, because I want to do a lot more watercolor paintings. But we would have doomsday prophets coming out of the walls if that was the case, right? Oh, my gosh. You'd have to listen to paid commercials on TV to turn to Jesus or whatever they would say. Turn to Muhammad or Islam, whatever. But everybody and their dog would be taking out commercials as their last will and testament, probably. Going to bring into Mars orbit and potentially injecting some into interplanetary space. And because Mars hosts dozens of active and planned spacecraft, from the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter to the Perseverance rover, an impact would not just scar the planet, but also shatter decades of scientific investment. Communications relays, climate monitoring, and life search missions could all be crippled overnight. Inside NASA, quiet preparations are underway. Leaked memos show mission planners already using the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter as a forward radar to image and track 3i Atlas's inbound vector. High-gain antennas at Goldstone have been repurposed to bounce radar off the comet's core. The results are still classified, but one insider described them as unlike any echo we've ever recorded. Hard metallic returns instead of soft ice signatures. And once again, I would be utterly fascinated to find out where Uncovered X got that insider information and how legitimate it is. But just understand, it's this type of stuff that really whets our appetites. Regardless of what happens, this is an amazing situation that we are in right now. And it's less than two weeks away. So keep your eyes peeled and tuned. This is fascinating. Let's look at one more idea that I want to share with you. If these leaks are accurate, 3 I Atlas may not be just ice and dust at all. Its core might contain alloys impossible to form naturally in deep space, hinting at an artificial interior surrounded by sacrificial ice. Professor Abby Loeb and a student, Adam Hibbard, have long argued for technological explanation. Their new paper, under peer review but already circulating online, lays out a scenario in which 3i Atlas is a directed messenger launched by an advanced civilization. Instead of simply passing through our system, it would graze Mars to deposit probes or crash deliberately to release detectable materials from underground caches. They calculate that with each pulse of gas, the object is not losing mass randomly, but steering itself, sailing on its own sublimated exhaust. This would allow it to adjust trajectory as it enters our planetary neighborhood, the way a spacecraft uses reaction control thrusters. As if to confirm the worst fears, the European Space Agency's Mars Express has photographed three small glinting objects in high orbit over Mars, arranged in a triangle formation. Initially dismissed as cosmic rays, they appear in the same positions on three consecutive orbits. Could these be scout probes ejected by 3i Atlas in a previous pass? Loeb urges NASA to cross-reference these glints with Archivula MRO data to see if any matching metallic fragments are already on the surface. If found, it would be the first evidence of interstellar technology ever recorded, far more significant than the Mars meteorites we've studied on Earth. The timeline now looks chilling. September 26, 2025 marks 3i Atlas crossing Mars's orbital path. September 19 to 30 is the critical window for final course corrections via gas pulses. During this period, the comet's speed relative to Mars will be about 57 kilometers per second. At that velocity, even a glancing strike could vaporize cubic kilometers of rock and eject dust into space. Critics argue no natural comet can change its path by 10 kilometers a second using sublimation alone. That would take more than 10 billion joules of focused energy, far more than any comet outburst we've ever seen. 
Yet, that's exactly what is implied by the trajectory. This energy gap is Loeb's strongest card. If we're seeing such a maneuver, something is providing power on a scale unknown to planetary science, possibly fusion or antimatter reactors buried beneath the ice, venting superheated gas as thrust. We shall see. Um, 12 days. I'm kind of half excited. I'm only half excited because I am really thrilled we're on this side of the solar system right now and not over there by Mars. Uh, yeah. But still, uh, I really, really hope things work out to where this thing does not smash into Mars. Uh, and it won't. I'm going to say it here now. It's going to whiz right by you. It's going to be incredibly close. It's going to be extremely fascinating. I hope we get some wonderful pictures. Unfortunately, of course, the agencies are going to be keeping them all to themselves. You know, in the interest of national security, we can't show you what this thing is. Even if it is just a rock, you watch, they'll come up with some ding bad answer to keep us in the dark, of course. And we as a general public, 300 million of us, mind you, we continue to just let them. You know, a collective, you've pissed us off for too long now, could begin to get very, very helpful if 300 million of us recognize where the real power is. I'm just saying, I'm telling you, take our government back and let's get this thing going right. Let's elect the right people. But it takes a collective will, you know. We can't keep re-electing the same old stupid gum-toting dingbats like McConnell into office for 38 years. That's not the intention. That's all I'll say on that score. Kentucky, get with it. So, anyway, uh, thanks for watching the Backyard Professor Respond videos. I have fun with these. Uh, there's some fantastic stuff out there in the space. <laughs> Whether it's a comet or a UFO, it doesn't matter. So, uh, I will be back with more as I find it. In the meantime, you guys remember, have fun. Be good. Work hard. Be nice, love one another, and make lots of friends. It's much more fun to have friends than enemies. Just because someone thinks differently and comes to different conclusions than you does not make them an enemy. We've got to quit that stupid, immature type of low IQ thinking and recognize our IQs are bigger than our shoe size, and let's begin to use them. And I'll catch up to you just as soon as I can. Have a great night.